So they told us in school that the Roman Empire fell with the fall of Constantinople, which was the capital of the Eastern Rome, the Eastern Roman Empire in around the 1400s, right? So the Roman Empire fell in the 1400s with the fall of Constantinople. But did it really? I'm going to say the answer to that is no. And we're going to talk about that in this upcoming On the Road edition of Maddie's Rap. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Maddie's Rap, the show where we rap about things the guys rap about when we're hanging out. I'm your host, the award winning author of two books from Fear to Faith, the Survivor Story and Stuck in an Elevator, which is currently my hottest selling book. My name is Matt D. Talford, uh, in case you don't know. And if you're new to the channel, please uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now because I think you're going to like my content. If you're a returning uh, a subscriber, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out my videos. Thank you for all of the comments you guys send me. Thank you for all the love and support. Thank you for the people who reach out to me in DM on my Instagram, which is at Matt D. Talford. And uh, before we get started, you guys know I like to tell you to do this up front. Go ahead and hit that like button right now. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, all right? Because uh, if you don't like it, you can hit a thumbs down afterward. But just let us know why you didn't like the content. Now, and remember, it's important to like the videos up front uh, of the people that you like. Because with the way that YouTube works, you're probably going to get a recommended video right after this one. And uh, you, it might intrigue you and you might forget to hit the like button. So go ahead and hit it now. Now that we got the pleasantries out of the way, let's talk about the Roman Empire. Remember in, in high school history class or maybe your collegiate level history class, if you took some college uh, history or whatever, they told us that the Eastern or the, uh, Ro the Romans fell, the, East, the Roman Empire fell with the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire, which was... Uh, the capital city was that great walled city of Constantinople, which was uh, renamed to Istanbul by the Ottoman Turks, and it still stands today. And it happens to be one of the most beautiful cities in the world, in my opinion. Now, I've never been to, to Istanbul, but I've, I've, I'm a big fan of uh, documentaries and a big fan of just, uh, you know, videos and such, whether it's YouTube, Amazon, Netflix, whatever, where they're showing you different cities around the world. And uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, Constant, not Constantinople, good lord. Well, I guess it still is Constantinople, technically. But uh, Istanbul, I'm going to tell you, money were no object, and I could live in any city in the world. <sighs> Istanbul is probably the most beautiful city I've seen. Just the the, the, the buildings, the way they're structured, the, the beauty, the layout of the city, the red roofs, uh, the water. Man, that's probably where I would I could, where I'd live if I, you know, if money were no object. But anyway, getting back to my point, they told us that uh, the Roman Empire fell with the fall of Constantinople in the 1400s. Now, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Here's why. <sighs> Were the Roman, was the Roman military finally crushed and, and, and put to rest by the Ottoman Turks? Absolutely it was. We know that. However, Rome built a little lifeline for itself probably about a thousand years before the fall, the official fall of the Roman Empire. What was that lifeline? That lifeline was Christianity. And it was introduced to the world by none other than Emperor Constantine. Now, I know those of you there, are those of you out there that say that you know Christianity, uh, uh, there were Christians that that were around before uh, uh, Constantine decided to make Christianity the official religion, if you will, of the Roman Empire. But but let me tell you something. That is uh, officially speaking, if you look at the brand, the flavor of Christianity that that dominates throughout the world today. That was pretty much a, a creation of Emperor Constantine. Now, and I got a separate video I'm going to be uh, breaking down, which which shows you how uh, Christianity was uh, created to be a stumbling block to a certain group of people. Not going to deal with that right now. We'll come back to that in another video. So this is why you want to subscribe to my channel. But uh, getting back to my point, the Roman Empire's military fell. But what they did was they pretty much... The Romans scattered after the uh, the Ottoman Turks finally dealt with their military. Remember, Rome dominated for about 1,500 years. That that was a very a very long-lasting empire that dominated for 1,500 years. 
but the empire itself didn't fall. You see, <laughs> what the Roman military could not do, Christianity accomplished and did it a lot, a lot more efficiently. Okay, so the Roman military tried, like many other civilizations, you know, before and after Rome, to conquer the whole world. And, and, and never never successfully did it. You know, the, the further you spread your military out away from its home base, its home country, the weaker it gets. That's just how it goes. I mean, the longer, the longer and further they're away from home, I don't care what military it is, the weaker they're gonna get. That's, that, I, mean, I mean, that's documented history. You can look at the mightiest militaries and look at what happened to them the longer and further they were away from home. But you see, what Christianity did was, Christianity took a message and conquered entire lands with it. Now, uh, Constantine, if you look at it, what, what he did when he created Christianity was he wanted to create something to deal with these people that he had to fight against that were not into the Roman paganism. Now, who in particular am I talking about? I'm talking about where they set up shop and enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, at least 100 years of, of occupation. And that is uh, the land or the kingdom of Judah. All right. Now, if you followed any of the work, you know who occupied the kingdom of Judah. You know who occupied the land of Judah. You know who occupied the land that is known today as Israel. All right. We know who that was. It wasn't. It wasn't the ancestors of the people who are there right now. I'm sorry if that triggers you. Sorry if you find that offensive. It's true. It's historically, anthropolo anthropologically, and biblically accurate. What I'm telling you is accurate across all those three disciplines: anthropology. I, I, I've, I've seen a number of documented videos where people have gone and looked at and studied and looked at the DNA of the skulls that were found in the Israelite tombs or Israelite burial grounds in ancient Kemet or Egypt. All right. And those skulls, there's only one people, there's only one group of people today whose skulls match those, whose DNA match those. All right. And they're the same people that were enslaved in America. But, I, but that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to just wanted to lay down some ground rules, okay? All right, or or or, or, lay, or lay the backdrop. So uh, just so I'm so I'm staying on point. Uh, we know that we know who occupied Judah. Rome wanted to deal with these people because even though they didn't have a a a formed military or army, the motherfuckers could fight. They could fight. All right. Yeah, I bleeped it out. I bleeped it out. Okay. <laughs> But come on, y'all, don't die. Look, don't look funny. A lot of y'all talk like that. A lot of y'all think like that, all right? So anyway, back to my point. They could fight, and they were a thorn in Rome's side, all right? So, so much so that uh, after the last revolt that the Romans put down, which was pretty much them not fighting Judah, they were pretty much fighting uh, converts to the ways of the uh, the Israelites that, that occupied and that were driven out of the land of Judah, okay? And I'm talking about the... Bar Kokhba revolt of I want to say that happened in 125 AD or whatever or CE if you if, if, if you like CE better uh, those people were pretty much converts at that time and they were like hey look you know we want this everybody wanted that land for some reason I mean for some reason everybody wanted that land and still do <laughs> but we'll talk about that later all right that's a that's not the subject of the conversation we're talking about how the Roman Empire never fell all right they never really fell so anyway Rome wanted to deal with those people and wanted to deal with that whole mindset, even so much so that after they put down that final revolt, they changed the name from the Judean province to Syria, Palestinia. Syria, Palestinia is what they changed the name to. And that's where the name Palestine comes from. A lot of people don't realize that, but you can look it up. Palestine, the name Palestine is a Roman creation. All right. So. There's, there's, uh, listen, you, there's a lot of power in names and, and, and words and the vibrations that are associated with them. This is why that name was changed. But check this out. That name wasn't even the Judean province then. It wasn't Judah then. Judah, remember the word J? I mean, the letter J and the sound, the J sound are, are only about 400 something years old. Okay. Th those were, those are letters that did not exist in spoken language, uh, prior to the 1600s. So one must ask himself, what was the what was the real name of that land? What was it called? What was it called before the Europeans came in and and started either you know, well changed it because they couldn't pronounce it? You know the 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 the, the, the Latin speaking Romans and uh, the Greek speaking Greeks. What 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 was it called before those folks changed the name because they couldn't pronounce it? 
for whatever reason. All right. So um, we know that. And, and, and listen, before you guys start talking this, that, the third, oh, that's a conspiracy. There's not. I would invite you to look at look at the 83rd Psalm. All right. Psalms 83. Psalms 83. In the beginning of it talks about a conspiracy. So if you want to call it a conspiracy, yes, yeah, a conspiracy. It's even it's even biblically documented as such. All right. It said, come, let us conspire together that the name of Israel is no longer in remembrance. Now, people who can't think outside the box would say, well, but they call it Israel today. Guess what? <laughs> Israel is an English language uh, uh, interpretation of what that original name was. All right. What that original name was, which is probably something closer to Yasharal or Yasharala or something, something to that effect. All right. If you want to look at the Paleo Hebrew, but it wasn't called Israel. So Israel, the name Israel in and of itself is part of that conspiracy from Psalms 83 because it wasn't called Israel. All right. Remember, there's, there's vibrations to names. There are vibrations to names. And, and you know, uh, another YouTuber that I follow, uh, she mentioned that, you know, he who names a thing becomes the master of it. So <laughs> the people who change the name to what it is today are, are, are they're, they're the masters of it, whether you like that or not. All right. So, but anyway, we're talking about Rome here. We're talking about Rome. This is an on the road edition of Maddie's Rap, by the way, in case you couldn't tell from the vibration and the, uh, the road noise. So anyway, <sighs> talking about Rome. So here's the thing. The Romans changed the name of the whole region. They said, hey, you know, and this is documented. You can read some of this. And um, there's several books out there. I think a great resource is, well, a great resource is the one that was written by the uh, historian, uh, the Hebrew historian, uh, Flavius Josephus. All right. So uh, you can go and read uh, Wars of the Jews. And, and for the for some of y'all that are into the whole, oh, man, why are you reading that book, man? That, that ain't, that book wasn't written by a brother. How do you know he wasn't a brother? I mean, the rest of the history was whitewashed. They told y'all King James was a white man. He wasn't, all right? They told you those original, it's documented, there's whole books out there to document who the uh, monarchs were in, in, in Great Britain and the British Isles and such, Scotland and Ireland, uh, prior to a, a, a civil war or a civil conflict there in the 1600s where these people were driven out, all right? All right, remember, the Moors did not call themselves the Moors. History called them the Moors. But those who are students of history understand that these were a collective. The Moors themselves were a collection of Ishmaelites and Israelites that invaded the Iberian Peninsula through North Africa across that across that small uh, body border. That, I forget the, the name of the strait. I don't have it in front of me. I'm driving, so you know maybe I'll add it by the time I go to upload this video, or maybe you can look it up yourself or whatever. But anyway, um, they didn't call themselves Moors. History called them Moors. They were Ishmaelites and Israelites, all right? Now, I'm not even going to deal with that, all right? That's a whole other thing. We're talking about Rome here, all right? So, uh, getting back, they changed the names of everything. If you change the name of something, that you, you got the power to change the name. You're the master of it then. And Rome, they, they told you that the Romans wanted to change the name, the land that they had occupied and destroyed. They wanted to change it to Syria, Palestina. And so the name has stuck today. But Matt, you know, Matt, how did the Roman, how did the Roman Empire not fall? You said they didn't fall. Christianity, all right? They created Christianity to subdue these Hebrews from the tribe of Judah that were stubborn as heck and could fight like a mother. Okay, I won't say it. I'll bleep, I won't I won't need to bleep it out, all right? But they they knew them guys could fight. All right. They 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 went in there thinking, hey, okay, okay, we can we can run through these guys really quickly with a mighty uh Romans. And if anything, I think they're the ones that, that that cracked the code on how to beat the Romans. And and after that, Rome started losing battle after battle after battle. And before you know it, the Western Roman Empire fell. And the Eastern Roman Empire lasted about another thousand years longer than that. Um, why did they do it? Well, because they built these... This um, I mean, Constantinople was a, a well-defended city. And in fact, it was... Uh, the walls of it were built similar in similar fashion, only better... Uh, in similar fashion to the walls that were around Jerusalem. And I read some history somewhere that said the uh, the original designer of the, uh, the city of Jerusalem and the walls that were around it prior to the Roman invasion with uh, with, with three legions, including the storied uh, Tenth Fratensis, uh, they were, th those walls, the, the original designer couldn't get the design finished in time that he wanted. So that that's 
what they were left with was something that was, uh, you know, it was a three, three tiered wall, so to speak. But uh, he didn't, he didn't get it the height that he wanted. So, uh, I mean, look at how long Constantinople held up and how many invasions that they deflected before uh, this, this uh, Ottoman Turk named Mehmet something, I don't remember, uh, was able to finally break, break through and, and sack them in the 1400s. And I don't have the year, but I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. So, um, 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 anyway, uh, the, the Western Rome, Roman Empire fell in 400s, but what happened was they created a lifeline via Christianity. Christianity was created to subdue these Hebrews that were stubborn and, uh, and didn't want to give up their land, but they had to because it was prophesied. Uh, and, and for those of y'all that want to say, oh, the Romans beat them, or blah, 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 you know, the Rome, they were given into the hands of the Romans. Read the prophecy. Moses, Moses prophesied it. What was going to happen? Uh, remember, remember Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, those are conditional prophecies, all right? The prophecy turned history, but they were also conditional prophecies. What I mean by conditional prophecies is that they, if they were to follow one set of instructions, it wouldn't be called Israel today. It would be called by its original name and would still have the original inhabitants. So me and mine would still be over at home. Don't get triggered by that. It is what it is. Me and mine would still be at home. We would never have gone into slavery uh, as was prophesied, all right? Failure to follow the instructions. So the Most High and, and, and the Messiah, the Messiah also, uh, he also prophesied it in Luke 21 and 24. He said, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be carried away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Are we looking at the fulfill, fulfilling, fulfillment of the time of the Gentiles? Possibly so. But to wrap this, uh, 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 likely so actually, if you look at what's going on in the world. But uh, so to wrap this video up, did the Roman Empire fall? Nah, they didn't. Their, their military arm was broken and uh, it was broken for probably about maybe 300 years, maybe two or 300, maybe about 200 years, uh, their military arm was broken. So they probably, they didn't, they couldn't really fight anybody for 200 years. But what really happened is, you're saying, well, Matt, Rome never wrote, nah, we ain't talking about Rome, we're not talking about Italy. We're talking about the, the, the whole Roman empire that was uh, basically decentralized, okay? Rome, Rome used to be a centralized empire. As their military, as they got spread thin and their military, the, the inevitable uh, uh, came to be, they, they, what, what Constantine did was he basically created a lifeline, a life drip, an IV or whatever you want to call it, for that whole Roman influence, and it was via Christianity, all right, which began with, with Roman Catholicism, Christianity, which was a mixture of the ways of the, the, the very Hebrews that he had conquered, uh, the teachings of the Messiah, because the two were at odds. The, the, you, had, you, had, you had a sect of Hebrews. See, here's what was going on when the Romans were over there. Let me say this and I'm gonna wrap that up, all right? Here's what was going on during the time of the Messiah, the man that most of the world calls Jesus, which wasn't his name either, because there was no J, remember that. Um, the man that, the, <laughs> the Messiah, during the time of the Messiah, you had three factions, all right? You had the, 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 the Pharisees and those that wanted to keep the Levitical law and that sort of thing, you had them. And then you basically had the heathens that just was like, we ain't doing none of this anymore. We down with this Greco-Roman lifestyle. And then you had those, those, uh, those followers of the Messiah, the followers of the teachings of the Messiah that, that came to show them a better way. He came to show them, hey, look, you can't be, you can't, you can't keep this law, but I'm gonna keep it for you. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it for you and then sacrifice myself so that you all will have perpetual uh, remission of sin. That's what happened there, all right? So, now that all that stuff was going on, and I think what happened was his message, the Messiah's message, it, it became evident that his message was winning hearts and minds. So, yeah, centuries after crucifying and, and uh, crucifying him and his, his leaving the scene, Constantine says, hey, wait a minute. These people are really into this thing. They're really into it. But we also got some people that were fighting against these people that were following the ways of the teachings of this Messiah that we crucified. Um, and then you got people that want to do this whole, you know, follow our, our Roman style. So let's let's give them an amalgamation of all three. 
let's create something called Christianity that contains some of the teachings from the Torah, uh, that contains the teachings of the Messiah, some of the writings of the Apostle Paul, who we killed too. And then, uh, you know what, let's mix in some of our own Roman uh, deity type of uh, worship in there and give them this Christianity. And then what we'll do is we'll conquer their hearts and minds. And then we won't need a big military because when we go there and teach them this and give them this way, if they don't want to follow it, then we'll poke them with the sword and the spear. That's pretty much what happened. So they created this thing. He made it the law of the land. He made it the religion of the land. And he said, hey, you guys, you guys are Christians now. The Roman Empire is Christian. And so guess what? When the Western Roman Empire fell and then the Eastern Roman Empire continued, uh, uh, no more could they really go out and like really conquer, you know, but they, not the way that they could back in the day, but they were still conquering hearts and minds. And so therefore it allowed the Roman empire in effect to stay alive until they got their military back via those who had converted to Christianity. So it became decentralized and in, 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 in decentralization, it actually became more powerful. It's a Roman influence is all around the world right now. But it comes in via Christianity. So now you got Christian nations, all right, that, that, that uh, you know, hey, if you're not a Christian, then you're not right. So you still got this whole faction of, of the Romans fighting the Ottomans. And we're seeing that even today, which is May the 16th, 2021. We know what's happening over in the, uh, in the land of, the land that is now known as Israel. We know what's happening. It's just a continuation of, uh, of uh, Romans fighting Ottomans or the, the offspring of the Romans fighting the offspring of the Ottoman Turks. That's all it is. So anyway, guys, I know this was a, a lengthy video, but uh, I wanted to, uh, it was a, as, as I like to do as an author, I like to take you all the way around the, <laughs> all the, way around the block and show you the neighborhood before we, uh, we pull up to the house next door. And that's what we did today. So uh, I want to thank you for watching Maddie's Rap again. If you haven't done so, please hit the uh, subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on this? Do you feel like the Roman Empire is as alive as it's ever been? Or do you think maybe, you know, uh, Matt's talking hogwash. Rome fell to the Ottoman Turks in the 1400s and we haven't seen Rome or Roman influence since. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Or maybe you have a different thought. Maybe you have something that's completely different from all of those. Let me know. Leave a comment below. Thanks and have a great day.